All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, I got a wonderful uh, question comment uh, from Glory Days yesterday. So I wanted to do a video on that. And it really deals with investing and the Fed. And it allows me to really express my sensibility and worldview um, regarding investing in the Fed. And um, Glory Days mentioned, would love to hear your opinion on today's Fed's press release. To my mind, the power and significance of central bank policy should not be underestimated even for long-term investors. Market perception seems to be quite different compared to what media is trying to tell you. Declining interest rates on the long end and rising equity markets versus imminent tapering. And then he goes on and he mentions two particular quotations um, that came out. And so before I get into this, what I wanted to really explain is my background and history in investing. So I didn't come to investing uh, as a younger person. Uh, it was really, I'm 41 right now. It was really in my mid, early to mid thirties when I started to get uh, enthralled with it and start to read every book I could on it. And when I did get interested in investing, I very much was attracted to value investing. So the spirit of Benjamin Graham, David Dodd, Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, and then you have the sort of young guns, the younger value investors, Guy Spierre, Monish Pabri, Sven Carlin. Um, these guys are, you know, in their 40s, 50s, I think, in that range. So they're not like Warren and Charlie in their 80s and 90s. So they're kind of the next generation of value investors. And so one of the things that, uh, value investors do is they look at investing from a business perspective, not a market perspective. And so they're looking to understand the intrinsic value of a business, not kind of read the tea leaves of what the Fed is going to do or not going to do. Uh, I have a quotation in, I put it here in every description, every on the part of the comment section. Uh, the money is to be made in the micro, not the macro. And there's a couple quotations. There's a gentleman, Chuck Carnival, Fast Graphs. He has a quotation that I think resonates and expresses this. Uh, there's no such thing as a stock market. It's a market of stocks or something to that, that, that effect or. Um, it's not a stock market. It's a market of stocks, meaning you're looking at each individual valuation. Each individual company situation is unique with its CEO, with its vice president, with its factories, with its product, with its earnings per share. There's not some sort of grand the market. Uh, a lot of value investors also will use the term Mr. Market as a way to kind of deride macro um, investing in a way, if you want to put it that way, or just that, that they're not looking at the day-to-day -day, uh, wiggles and waggles, as, as Munger might say. And so I actually pulled up this quotation here uh, from Warren Buffett, and, and I'll play that in a second. So, so again, I'm coming at it from a value-heavy investing uh, persona. Now, listen, I, I enjoy listening for entertainment to people like Mohammed El Arian, or you'll see Nur Nouriel Roubini. I mean, the media loves him. He's, he's always uh, on. Uh, you'll see Lawrence Summers. Um, you'll see just economists, um, maybe Krugman, uh, you know, just talking about sort of macro societal issues. Uh, again, before I play this, this Buffett quotation, another thing that he said in one of his letters is the market is there to serve you, not to guide you. Let me say it again. The market is there to serve you, not to guide you. Meaning, because the market is going down, that doesn't necessarily mean that you should take action because of what's going on in the overall market. So it should serve your interests um, as opposed to, to telling you how to, how to act. Oh, the market's going up, I need to buy more stock. Or, oh, the market's going down, You know, I'm down 30%, I need to go to cash. Um, so that's, I think, a great quotation with it. I think the Chuck Carnival from Fast Graphs, and I think that particular Warren Buffett quotation uh, resonates. Again, so I, I, I'll read books on economics. I'll read these things, listen to these things for entertainment purposes, but it doesn't influence my investing much at all. Um, and, and so 
the other thing that, that Buffett had said one time was, you know, the economists generally uh, are poor investors. And, and that's something to keep in mind. There can be an interplay, um, but Warren Buffett at 22 CAGR is not Noriel Rubini. I don't know what Rubini's CAGR is, um, but economics and investing, they can be different worlds. And there can, of course, there's overlap. Um, so that's another thing. But let me go ahead and play this one minute soundbite. And I think this was this was actually on the street, Jim Cramer's um, website business here. Um, and so let me pull it up. Let me, I'm going to lower my face here. And here we go. In the investor mind from China to the Federal Reserve, can the economy withstand a, way, a rate hike? Oh, yeah, it, it can stand a rate hike. Sure. Will we get one? I, I have no idea. No, I've never met Janet Yellen, and uh, does it, it, I don't think she'd tell me if I... <laughs> does it matter to you either way? Do you think about your own financial holdings differently, whether it's Wells Fargo, the warrant to buy Bank of America, or the insurance companies? I never give a thought to it. I have never bought or sold a stock. I've never bought or sold a company where what the Fed is doing or is likely to do entered into my calculation. That's true of my partner, Charlie Munger. Not in 50 years, and it never will. So do you think a lot of the attention that investors are placing on the Fed is a little bit uh, over emphasis? In it's other a, words, it's a mistake to try and make investment decisions based on what the, you think the Fed is going to do. Just if, if you owned a farm, would you buy or sell it based on what you thought the Fed was going to do next week? Or, or if you owned a, a local little business that was good, if you owned an apartment house, would you say maybe I better sell it because the Fed may do this or that? No, you you'd just be content owning a good income producing asset. And American business has been wonderful going over the years. Well, it has for you, certainly. So if you're going to take a break from acquisitions after precision cast parts, what are you going to be doing today? So there you go. Uh, he essentially says, I've never bought or sold a business based on what the Fed is going to do or not going to do. And the reason I, I kind of bring in my history is I'm very much descended uh, from the spirit of value investing. And so it's just not something that informs my um the way I look at things, I'm constantly looking at valuations and running screens and um, just looking at different businesses. And uh, that's just kind of how I play the game. Uh, in addition to the value investing, I, I do other things, as you guys know, who follow this channel. So, um, you know, I do a lot with with options. I do um, I'm building out systems of trading, so on and so forth. So anyway, so that's just wanted to kind of go over that. I, I, you know, and the, the danger you run, I think, when you say. When someone says to you, what is the market going to do? And you say, I have no idea. Or if you say, you know, the, if the Fed does this, you know, what, what do you think is going to happen with the Fed? And, and should I do this? Should I not do this? And you say, I have no idea. You come off as kind of a, a simpleton and what some might term as dumb money because you don't have these like very specific decisions made with regard to how you think the Fed is going to do, do something. Uh, and then and then your reaction to it. It makes you sound really sophisticated when you when you can speak very fluently uh, on these these macroeconomic issues. So that's just something also keep in mind. You know, I read Howard Marks's book and he has the the I, I know camp and the I don't know camp. And he's kind of in the I don't know camp on predicting these things. So um, that's pretty much it for today. Uh, one other thing I want to show, you know, I actually spent all day in my tomato garden and it's a beautiful day when you know you're you're in, you're in your tomato garden all day and you come back in i didn't really even check the market much i was outside and you know we're up 9700 today um definitely a nice a nice feeling um you can see that this this account peaked at uh 649 651 649 and we were all the way down to 624 looks like even low 615 i think might have been the low we're back all the way up to 634. So we're, uh, we really had a rebound the last few days um, after the Evergrande sell off. So anyways, guys, that's it for today. I'm off to eat some tomato sandwiches. Ciao.